Hey, everybody. Welcome to this edition of the W Production Podcast. I'm Dr. John Meese here with my partner, Wendy Briggs. Hey, Wendy. Hello, Dr. John. And we are so excited to have a guest with us. Anji Bachman is here, and she is the Director of Clinical Training uh, and Education at Design so Design Ergonomics is a fantastic company. Angie, why don't you tell us a little bit about the company and about what you do? Well, first of all, thank you, Dr. Meese and Wendy for uh, having me today. I love talking about this stuff. So uh, I am the Director of Clinical Education and Training at Design Ergonomics. I have been with the company, I think I would say since 2011. Um, we are a dental office design firm, and we like to say we design, equip, and train the nation's top producing dental practices. Yeah. And I'd have to say, based on my experience, that that is true. Um, <clears throat> so I, 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 I sold designs for, for Dr. Ahern. Dr. David Ahern is uh, my boss, our founder, and practicing dentist-ish. He's kind of like... <laughs> <laughs> gotten away from that a little bit, but um, and spending a little more time with us in our factory. And um, as as you know, um, maybe your clients don't or those who are listening to this podcast don't, but we do manufacture dental equipment in Fall River, Massachusetts. Uh, we are a direct distributor of this equipment, so you don't buy our stuff from anybody else but us. Uh, and we like that. So um and the training program came, I would say, based on, you know, like we would have uh, offices buy our equipment, designs, or they would read Dr. Hearn's book, The Guide to Maximizing Productivity, and go, man, this is so great. I'm going to put it in my office, but I have no idea where to start and how to, how to get this thing rolling. And so we thought that was an opportunity to start a training program, and uh, Erica St. Pierre, who uh, was the director of the program. Um, she developed uh, a fantastic, it is a strong program. Um, and really what it is, is it's a way to improve the way you work by utilizing some lean manufacturing principles, which we talk about. Um, it's not like you need to have your Six Sigma, right? Like to do this, but it is, uh, it, it is in, Generally speaking, like a way to improve the way you work um, and always never compromising care. So optimizing that, you know, the patient is your customer, it's your client. So we need to make sure that you're adding value at every turn. And um, we help create that in the office and improve patient flow, worker flow, um, overall morale, quite frankly. So um, it's been, it's, it, it is what I was put on this planet to do, I feel like, um, just based on my personality. Go in, get it done, and follow up later, right? Um, but it is it is a game changer, that's for sure. So Dr. Hearn and I have been friends for 20 years at least, uh, and we've been students uh, studying different ways, um, diff in different ways of different parts of dentistry. But what he has really mastered is he's applied – um, the principles of lean and the Toyota production process uh, to dentistry. And, and that process reduces waste of time, of materials, of movement, uh, so that things run more efficiently. They run also more predictably. Uh, and they also run less expensively. So um, so the, the nice thing is that what, as he was learning these things, he was applying them in his own office and he, he, you know, his office was kind of a lab. Last time I was there, there was all different kind of op setups, you know, as he was testing things out or there was at least one op that always looked different than the rest yeah, as they were testing right. things out. Yeah, exactly right. And so he mastered this and now, you know, part of your job is not only teaching this to other people, but you actually go into offices, don't you? I do. Uh, that's my favorite part is, you know, we, our team, I have a team of five now. And so there are five people in the world that do this training, I like to say, and we are the only five in the world that do it, um, specific to dentistry. 
Um, it is a, it's, it's a process. I'll be honest. It takes a couple of months to actually get us to the practice. So there is a tremendous amount of, um, pre-work that's involved. You know, we want to see how you practice without ever setting foot in your practice. And we do that through a course of study, studying some uh, questions to some answers, you know, what technology do you have? Um, how many chairs, how many assistants, hygienists, um, you know, what are your goals? What are your bottlenecks? And we can do that, um, listen to those question answers, and then take a series of pictures and imagine how the day would run. And so our team is made up of five clinicians, of course, you know, like we already know how the clinical department runs. Um, but the challenge is, is so like back implementing in the, day, the principles. Yeah. yeah. Back, back in the day, uh, uh, Design Ergonomics designed a expansion on my office. And so they, you guys had me videotape myself working and then take pictures of the whole office. Now you got down that you've seen so many of them. It's just one after another, after another. You just get pictures and you can tell where there's flows and there's bottlenecks and where there's not enough space and where the organization's off, can't you? We can. Um, and and we're, we're always thinking in, in our minds, you know, what's going to make those improvements is, you know, universal principles like keeping things simple. Um, we want to have a visual resupply. We want to have, we want to be able to see what you're working with and know how much inventory you have. Um, we, we like the modular capability of it. So, you know, you no longer bring inventory to your operatory. You actually bring your operatory to inventory to restock. And that's just like a complete, it's a, just a different concept. And, um, well, what do we do with our drawers, Angie? I go, nothing, put a plant on it or you can get it out of here. I don't yeah, we'll, tear them we'll out. Yeah. It. <laughs> we'll yeah. never use it. It's too far away. Uh, you think about how many times you open a drawer and look and then go, oh, it's not in there. Close the drawer time, right? The get up and go get um times are just it's just all considered waste One of my stories, sorry sorry go ahead go ahead wendy no i was gonna say you know we, we often teach that dentistry is a business of flow um and people often get stuck there right they think that means we've got a shorten appointment times or there's other ways to influence it very rarely do they take a step back and try and evaluate okay where can we improve the flow with what we already have and that's where it's, you know, we see magic happen, right? We also teach that effectiveness is doing the right things and efficiency is doing things right. So when you combine both of those, you have much higher productivity, right? And so I kind of view it as you, you have become our partner within TTI that can help people sort out if they're doing things right, right? Or if there's opportunity yeah. for a higher level of efficiency. And, and like you said, when you're working in that every day, you often experience a sense of overwhelm and you don't know where to start and you don't even know how to measure how effective you are with your time based on what's good, what's bad. We don't know. And that's what's so amazing about your team and, and your process and your program is that you can help evaluate that and you're an independent third party, right? Your goal is to help everybody get better. Anybody who wants to get better, that's your goal. Right. And, and you've created not only the, the systems and the training to do that, but the products too, which is what I love about you know, Dr. Hearn's uh, scientific mind. I love how he thinks, right? right. Because if there's not a solution available. He learned early on, there's some things that just weren't readily available to dentists. So we're going to make them. And that's right. essentially what's evolved, you know, in what he's built. I'm which so is glad really you said that because that it, that's the truth. And when I saw him speak for the first time was years ago, like 2006. And I had been a clinician for a number of years and then a consultant. And then, you know, I'm I'm watching him speak and I'm like, you know, like, what? what is that? <laughs> I mean, I couldn't, I could have done that before. <laughs> what? And I'm like, I got to be a part of that one day. So, um, yeah, just it, it, sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. And um, bringing this simplicity to a dental, we're, we just take all the complicated out. Yeah. All those things that bottle the practice down and 
you know, like I say that if I could save you five to 10 minutes per appointment, that's per appointment, not per column, not per doctor, not that is per patient per appointment. Yeah. Um, that would allow you to open up an opportunity for your community who deserves care from your fantastic dental practice, right? Like everybody yep. deserves that. And let's open up ways to allow that to happen. And everybody thinks becoming more productive. The, the natural thing that a dentist thinks is I have to work faster. I have to drill faster. Yep. I have to do things faster, but that's not really where the advantage comes from. You know, it, it, uh, Dr. Hearn taught me that the the tooth the, the drill on tooth time from the most productive dentist to the least productive dentist isn't that much different. It's everything else. It's <laughs> that, everything else. Yeah. It's that it's, mundane, all those things that you don't consider as part of flow. I mean, as doctors, so forgive me, or as um, providers, um, sometimes those, you know, all that work. I'm an assistant. And so all that, I mean, I still have to maintain your handpiece. I still have to maintain your autoclave. I still have to find time to clean traps and, um, you know, shock water lines and things like that. I still have to find time to do that within this time frame. And we have a full patient load, you know, but if I can make all of those other processes simpler, and I use simple more than anything else, because the simpler it is, the more efficient it runs because you don't, there's no, nothing complicating it. Um, yeah. I can give examples. The consistency examples. goes up a lot. The simpler it is, the more consistent it is. That's right. Yeah. And so we just make things simple. If I have five doctors that have five different bonding agents, we have to figure that out. That is hard to coach. Yeah. I've, in, in this day and age with um, staff changes and or team changes and um, your human capital changes, um, I, I don't want it to be difficult to coach someone up into their role. It should be simple that anybody yeah. could do it. So when I started applying these principles in my office, uh, you know, they, they were a handful of things, but everything was simplification. Everything was uh in many ways centralization having everything in the same place uh, making it visual and so my inventory of stuff that i had to have went way down uh as most people does i'm sure when we emptied the uh the drawers that we had in the ops yeah um you know there was you know thousands of dollars of outdated materials and Everybody thinks, okay, well, we ran out of this one time, so I'm going to squirrel a little way in, uh, some in my, away in my op just in case we ran into a rainy day, and then it expires and you end up throwing out all this stuff. So when you come into an office, kind of what are the, the main places where you're focusing on as you reset up the, uh, the flow and the, the process? Uh, good question. Sterilization is one, um, that flow has, that is happening after every patient. And I want to make it, so our goals as clinicians is to, our instruments have to be clean before they go in the autoclave. How you achieve clean is entirely up to you. I'm gonna give you the most efficient way to do that, to get your instruments clean, not sterilized, because the autoclave is the only thing that will do that but to get them clean should not be, you know, using an ultrasonic. It shouldn't be hand scrubbing instruments. It shouldn't be, it should have a, uh, a nice streamlined flow that doesn't require much thought that anybody could do. Yeah. Um, it should be the first thing that you can teach, the first thing it can be duplicated, replicated, and it, it can, that process can be done simple. Cassettes are a must. Yeah. One universal burr block, right? One universal hygiene cassette. And Wendy, I would love your opinion on what your thoughts are on that. If I can ask a question, because yeah, absolutely. Uh, I do. Wendy, do you want to talk? Yeah, yeah. You know, 
uh, we're, we're aligned in that, Angie, you know, Dr. John and I always have to tread carefully, right? We have to gain the, the trust of the practices we work yep. with first before we start having radical ideas like you really shouldn't have that many scalers in your setup, right? So for me, a, a basic Profi setup is fairly simple. It's five things, right? A mirror, uh, a perio explorer, a probe, a sickle, and a universal. That's your basic Profi setup. And if you need more than that, chances are you're probably not doing a Profi or you're not using your power scaler uh, enough, right? Because that is a universal tip and you're supposed to be able to scale every surface of every tooth with that. So, you know, of course there's differences when we get into periodontal scaling and periodontal services. Uh, but even then, I, I always teach that you grab your basic setup plus a setup that has three curettes right? Mm -hmm. Three or four, you know, my favorites are like a Gracie one, two, you know, there should be Gracie's for each, you know, 11, 12, 13, 14, and a one, two. Um, you can have minis or regulars depending on what you want, but really we make things way too complicated. And that's something that we call it a very common time vampire in many practices because hygienists are very meticulous people. And so if we have a setup that has 12 to 15 instruments, we want to use all of them every time. <laughs> and, and that causes us to run behind. Um, yeah. So certainly I'm not saying that there can't be a drawer of specialty instruments when you come into a unique circumstance, but for the most part, we should all simplify in that area as well. That's my opinion on that. Well, thank Can't you for sharing that because I, I know it's your podcast, but I'm like, you know what, maybe I'll take this opportunity to get like <laughs> this expert's um, point of view um, as, as a hygienist. So thank you. So Andrew, when we put this into place and, and we we got the team together and we, we laid out the concept, here's the cassettes. We only have this many spots. Pick, you know, let's decide. It's only going to be one way. Everybody's got to do it the same way. There was a lot of groaning. There was a lot of yelling. There was a lot of tears. And that was mainly the doctors. Uh, everybody else seemed to, to, to capture the idea and go with it. But uh, but boy, I tell you, it made it so much easier because we had four doctors in our practice at the time. And uh, the way we had it, it was so complicated that assistants could only work with this doctor because they right. knew what that doctor wanted. It was highly inefficient, big blockage to same day dentistry. Mm -hmm. And when we got this down and it took it, it wasn't easy, uh, but when we got it down, it really improved us and allowed us to get team members in and trained really quickly because we had simplified it so much. Right. And I would say too, to your question about the hygiene instruments, you know, um, hygienists can become nested and only want to work out of their room because that's where their instruments are, right? And that impacts patient flow and patient service and patient care. And so when we when we are able to have a universal setup that everybody is is agrees upon and is willing to use, it it minimizes the complication there. And, and as you mentioned, when we're talking about adding in same day services on the hygiene side, preventive services, it's not extra hours of time we need. It's no. a handful of minutes. And it so those is. minutes become critical in really driving a higher level of care for patients, which reflects in the productivity at the end of the day. Absolutely. And, and communication is key. So, you know, that having, uh, you know, it is true. You know, I, I run into that a lot and that's, an, oh, this is my room. And I, I correct them throughout the two day process, but it's not like we're introducing it for the first time when I show up. It's, I want you to take a look at the guide. I want to have conversations with your clinical leads. I want to really involve them because lean, a lean culture teaches us to really involve the people who actually do a lot of this work. And what is, what do you think is working great in your practice? What do you think isn't? And so they kind of have a, a pretty good idea what I want to do when I go in. Um, and if, if, if I just say, Hey, get on your radio or type a uh, note or whatever yappy system or whatever they're using for inner office communication that, Hey, um, my conversation with a patient is, do you have another 10 minutes? You've got a small filling. The doctor just diagnosed. Let's get it done right now. How, who does that benefit? It benefits everybody. Yeah. Um, and especially the patient who doesn't have to schedule and take another day off of work or whatever the case may be. And it saves on infection control time. Um, just all of, all of the things that, um, 
could be bottlenecks in in patient care and flow? So the experiences of our clients that you've, and you've worked with many of our clients, the experiences that they've had uh, have been fantastic. Everybody says that oh, when yay. you come in, that it's, 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 it's a whirlwind. It's a, it's a tough couple of days getting it all done and everybody kind of letting go of some of their preconceived thoughts about how things are and change is always, you know, uh, difficult. Uh, change is difficult, but progress is easy. And so once it's done, mm -hmm. then everybody just loves it because it, right. again, it's so much simpler. So what we see is that their productivity rises because there's less wasted time, effort, movement. Uh, we also see that there is a reduction in supply costs and in, in offices that of ours that you've worked with, you know, we're seeing about a, um, you know, somewhere around a 10 to 12 percent drop in supply costs. And it, largely that's because there's elimination of waste. Awesome. Um, so uh, and, and also there is less wear and tear on the team because they're not having to deal with complexity. Right. Uh, and, you know, we know practices that have an extra assistant that's not really providing value to patients, they're dealing with the complexity. And so in some offices, they're able to deploy that person in a way that can provide more value for patients. Right, sterile tests. No, another thing too, Angie, I would say, I would add to that, you know, for years, Dr. John and I, one of the things that we do with practices is we help them with their mindset shift, right? Mm -hmm. Opening up the door and helping them see the value in same day dentistry and seeing the value from a strategic standpoint. Mm -hmm. And, uh, then they often need help on the tactical, right? Yeah. And that's where sometimes we hand the baton to you because they're out of capacity. They, they don't know of, of how, a way to overcome that beyond a second location, which sometimes they eventually do. But um, I have seen you guys work miracles with taking an existing facility and all of a sudden you've got two more operatories that, that are there with some creative reconfiguring, right? Um, other, other things like you mentioned, is helping the team know where to start with the tactical side of doing same day. And so I think that's what's been so rewarding for me to watch is on the outside looking in is we've got some of the strategic concepts nailed, but then you guys can step in and bridge some of the gaps on the tactical, how to actually get it done day to day right. in the office. But yeah, wow. I love this conversation. <laughs> it's really great to hear. Um, you know, I hear a lot from the clients that I've worked with that have worked with you and, um, you know, I would consider them friends at this point, right? Because, and if they need anything, like I'm Johnny on the spot for them, even if, you know, I might be in the middle of something or whatever, I will break free because they're, they, they get it, they get it. Um, and it, but it is a whirlwind, like you said, to go back on, on what you were saying earlier, you know, like it is going to be a colossal mess before we actually put the pieces together. And so we, the five S's sort, set, shine, standardize and sustain. Um, we spend a heck of a lot of time sorting. Do you use it? Don't you use it? And if you don't use it, what do we do with it? Do we donate it? Do we, you know, we, we and I ask those questions a lot. And then what we do use, it's how often do you use it? Um, so they're fun and they're interactive. I try to make it fun. Like, you know, sometimes we'll get obnoxious and I'll have a hygienist who can't live without 15 flavors of profi paste. And I'm just like, whoa, okay. How can we shrink that down a little bit? Um, <laughs> actually a lot. So <laughs> we, we have fun with it. And then like, sometimes they'll kind of like look back and go, man, that was really absurd. Why, why did I do that? How much time I took in buying the product and, and then asking the patient, like, what flavor do you want? 10 minutes goes by and you finally <laughs> have your filthy paste flavor. It's like, what? Um, it just, it's, it's just some of those things that we can just simplify down and just make it yeah. easy. Yeah. So if, if anybody listening wants to have their office run more efficiently, wants to increase productivity, wants to uh, simplify everything, re eliminate complexity, or at least dramatically reduce complexity, uh, and be able to provide more care for patients, then this process is, is really, really helpful. 
So Angie, if somebody was going to start to, to, or is, is considering um, working with you guys and in, in making these improvements, what would be the first step for them? Um, I would schedule a call with them. Okay. Um, and I do that because every practice is different. These, this is, even though the principles are, are pretty standard, every practice is different and I want to learn about it. And we don't just say, okay, hey, here, sign up here and let's just get to work. I want to know that, you know, you're not going to throw me to a pack of wolves, right? You know, like <laughs> I've shown up at a couple of offices and they're like, hey, have at it. Um, okay. And they're like, who is this? You know? Yeah. So yeah. I, I, I want to really get an understanding with a doctor, you know, hey, what are your goals? Where do you, you know, what is the plan? Um, if they are, they feel like they are at capacity, I want to maximize that space and like, how can we increase, you know, some capacity to help you, you know, earn that extra, be more productive and then go ahead and be able to start that second location or build that expansion, um, or do some charity work or whatever their goal is, sure. um, I just want to know what those things are because that's that's a really good place to start, and then we will we'll go from there and get a basis yeah. on um, on you know how we're going to treat reboot training. Yeah, I love that that place as a start because you create a, you know you you understand the vision uh, and you know you get to know maybe what some of the obstacles might be. Mm -hmm. So that you can prepare for it. So it, it's not it is, the principles are the same, but it's not cookie cutter. You adjust it depending on what the doctor wants, what their vision is, and, and what their uh, what the obstacles that they're facing are. So I love that. So if somebody were to give you a call or set up a call, how would they go about that? I would I would just suggest that they would email me. Uh, the likelihood of me being able to respond to that is much better than me picking up a phone. Um, if any of your clients ever have worked with me or will work with me, we'll soon learn that I, um, I am in it to win it. And my focus is 100% on that practice. And I don't let anything distract me from that. So um, it could be a couple days. So email is always best. I'll always check that. You'll hear from me within 24 hours. Um, and my email address, do you want me to share that? Absolutely. We'll put it in the notes, but go ahead and share it. Oh, okay. Perfect. Uh, it is a Bachman at disergo.com. Uh, our company website is www.desergo.com. And my name is Angie Bachman and my email a Bachman, B-A-C-H-M-A-N at disergo.com. So our, our clients that have worked with you call you one of two things, uh, Honey Badger or Ergo Angie. So <laughs> Ergo. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, gosh. I, you know what? I'm going to get a T-shirt made. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. And at the next, at your next event, if I, if I have um, the opportunity to, to join that, to, to join you guys at that event, I will wear that shirt or wear that hat or I'll be flaunting it. Awesome. Yeah, like Wendy, any last thoughts? No, I mean, thanks so much for joining us today. Like I said, we, we love to always have content nuggets that our listeners can use right away. And I think they've gotten yeah, a lot to think about here today from you, Angie. So we certainly appreciate yeah. that. Well, good. And I, I can't thank you all enough for um, inviting me to, to talk with you. With oh, we're, super, we're super glad to have you, Angie. All right, that's it for this episode of the W Production Podcast. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.